April of 2006 when she was interviewed for the local newspaper. She said she wanted to do the SATs early and she wanted to go off to college by age 16. As a baby, Janice did all of her goals before the age appropriate milestones. One of the things uh, that we found interesting is that I would say things to her, you know, the alphabet, uh, numbers and so on, to her at home, and she would literally repeat them. And it was especially, I mean, strange is that we would go out in public and she would start saying these numbers or whatever, and people would look at her and ask, how old is she? And that was when, you know, we kind of said, well, you know, this is, this is extra. By the time she was five, she knew all the states by shapes. People would come over and she'd have a room full of people and she's just picking out one and showing it to them and stomping the adults with the states. She was reading chapter books in kindergarten. She was doing multiplication in kindergarten. So we really knew that she was doing, which for us multiplication is a third grade scale and she was doing it in kindergarten pretty easily. So we knew that she needed more challenge. The school tested her, they gave her the whole SAT test. And uh, when the results came back, it showed that she was in the uh, 99th percentile in all areas, uh, which was the ninth day nine, and that um, her IQ was 142. Above. It was found to be at that time. Even as smart as Janice was, you think that it would have been a breeze in school and that teachers would have been helping, the school system would have been helping and it would have been fine for her. But that was not the case. She was given a math test. Now in that test, Janice did everything perfectly. However, she didn't get a perfect score. So she approached the teacher to show her you know, this is right and, it's, and you've marked it wrong. And she came home and told me. Very so upset. I said, if what you're telling me is correct, because it seems right, then you're right, but I have to see the paper. Lo and behold, when the test came home, Janice was correct. One day early in October, Janice came home very upset. She told me she was in detention. And I said, for what? She said, I forgot to take some note cards to school because I didn't hear the teacher say, I'm not sure I heard the teacher say you're supposed to take it. I didn't take a book back to school that day, so I didn't have my note cards. She said, and for that, I was dropped a grade. I was put in detention and I had to write out disorganized I was and this would never happen again. I was very, very unhappy. I waited all day I stayed in the school. I moved with her from class to class because they moved to different teachers. At the end of the day, I went to the new principal, Mrs. Bolden, and I told her what happened. And she called Janice and she called the teacher. And she was not pleased. But before that, she said, I know the two of you. I said, me? She said, I know you and your daughter. I said, from where? I said, I don't. She said, church, we couldn't figure it out. Eventually, she remembered. She said, is this a little girl who spoke to the board in kindergarten? I always wanted to know where this girl went. And, and she Janice remembered. Good evening, everyone. My name is Janice Lane. I'm a kindergartner in Miss Karuna Rimar's class at Matthew Hedges Elementary School. I support the dedicated Montessori school proposal. We are learning a lot in the Montessori program. This program meets the needs of each student and allows each student to develop in all areas. She loves math, she loves science, she loves to read, but she really wanted to do the math. So she was doing fourth grade math in sixth grade, sixth grade math. math in the fourth grade. So at that point, she said she thinks she should um, start a homework club. So she organized some friends and they were going to be in a homework club helping the first and second grader. She had her proposal, she had everything drafted out. I still have it. She had all, all this big draft and she approached the teacher. And the teacher said, 
Lo and behold. Lo and behold. She thinks she's going to be starting a gang. And nix the idea. And right the there. idea was dead on arrival right there. After Janice won the Carson Scholarship in elementary school, it is a scholarship that you can get every single year if. until 12th grade. So in middle school, we tried, applied for the scholarship again. And would you believe the principal did not sign the scholarship application? Eventually, she saw the score, she saw all Janice's academics and everything, but that didn't mean anything to her. So they promised her they'll group her with this particular student. When we got the schedule, it was a schedule from somewhere else, not on this earth. She had this schedule where she was in class literally. with, literally in class with every group. So it was very hard for her. She had one class at the end of the school, and then you had to run to the other end, run back, and she was, so she said at that point, life throw me lemon, I'll make lemonade, I get my exercise at Kenmore. Uh, we knew of a program that is uh, run at uh, Prince George's Community College for middle schoolers. It was a science program. We knew about it. We requested that the school allow her to participate in the program. Didn't hear anything from the principal. Eventually, we contacted the principal again because we know the program is, I mean, it's about to start or something and what's going on. Eventually, the principal let us know that the program requires A, B, C, D, all of which Johnny's had. We subsequently found out that the county gave the middle school four, four slots. slots for that program. The school sent two, two males to the program and did not send anybody else. This is a student who in middle school did the SATs and got 1830 at age 12. And this is the kid that you are denying opportunities. For the summer, Janice had done the uh, program at NASA known as the sister program, where she, uh, as a sixth grader, she was with seventh graders and eighth graders. And they, you know, they learned some stuff. They did a nice little program for students at NASA. They called the school and asked if Janice and Three other students can be would be allowed to um, come. They would have a workshop when the Queen was there, and the, the response they get was, "Why Janice?" So they had chosen some other students that they wanted, and the lady went back and told the director, "You know, this is what happened." And I guess they told them if Janice can't come, they could keep the rest of the kids they can't come. So Janice was able to go to see the Queen. Janice was scheduled to, to go on a to go use her poster board at the symposium that NASA had. They wouldn't give her the day off. It was two days off for the symposium. They would not give her the day off to go to present at that symposium. I eventually decided I was going against what they said. They said she had to go to school and I took her to the symposium. I guess they marked her illegally absent and I, it took me a long time, but I eventually got it off. Many of these uh, awards that Janice got was in spite of these principles. Now when it's time for the student to get the award at the board, the principals are required to be there. So here it is, the principal who didn't encourage the student, didn't support the student, and they're here standing with the parents and the student to take a to picture. And uh, we found that to be really... Over the summer, she did a Spanish immersion program. This program was for four weeks. At five. the end, five. At the end, at the halfway point, they invited the parents to come back and visit. This was in Amherst, Massachusetts and one student was selected to talk to the parents in Spanish. This person was, of course, Janice. At the end of the program, you return to high school and they and don't want no you to Spanish do Spanish three. They, they don't want you, they don't think you're capable of doing Spanish three. When we went there to set our schedule... There was no foreign language on the schedule. 
and Janice had just come back from a Spanish emotion camp. It took us going in there, back and forth, back and forth, for them to put the Spanish on the schedule. Eventually she got the Eventually. course and started tutoring people who were in higher grades. Once you're in high school, it's called S2M2, and we were told about it from another parent. So I gave Janice the package to take to the school because the science teacher had to write a recommendation. Write a recommendation. She asked Janice where she got it from, and Janice said, my mom. She didn't write a recommendation. She was just not writing for a long time. She wouldn't write a recommendation. But we subsequently found out she gave the same information to another student in the class, and the student applied. Eventually gave us a recommendation, which was <laughs> essentially a joke. We couldn't use it, hence we had to use the uh, guidance counselor. When Janice got to the program, there was this other student who was in ninth grade with her in the program. And she came and she told me, I said, hmm. After the, at the end of the week, we were having the closing ceremony and the parents came to me and they said, oh, how did you know about it? Do you work for the government? We said, no. They said, well, thank God for this teacher. She told us about it and she wrote a, wrote wonderful, a wonderful recommendation and this child got into the program. She wasn't willing to do that for Janice, so. One teacher uh, told us that Janice should uh, experience failure and then place her at the one of the things is she had issues seeing. His vision. So we let them know and requested her to be at the front of the room. And this teacher placed her at the farthest, the farthest position from the book. When we got our 11th grade schedule, there was no Spanish on it whatsoever. And she was registered to do AP Spanish that year. There was no Spanish. There was guitar, some PE twice. Some real, it, it was, was a, a crazy up schedule. schedule. She in 10th grade said, I don't think I have any more fight left in me. I'm so tired. You don't know how much I feel like I don't feel like going to school. It was really difficult, very difficult to be going to the Some nights it was like sleepless nights, you know, because you wonder what would happen to her. And I mean, there's only so much human being could take. Janice does not exhibit any amount of emotional turmoil. You know it's there because she's human, but she's always happy calm, and calm, calm poised in light of any negative thing, she still stays positive. What she does is she would write. She's written some poetry, and you can read them and tell where she's coming from. You can read them and tell what has happened. She was nervous. You move into a new place and so on, but nobody could really tell that, but she was nervous because she knew how things could be, but she was very happy for the two years. I must say, her AP chemistry teacher, Miss Ellen Clevenger, and her AP calculus teacher, Mrs. Patricia Howey, were very, very instrumental in her getting into Research Science Institute. They call it RSI, and this is a program where kids from around, students from around the world, come every year to MIT Top to 5%. do research 
under the guidance of professors. She met a teacher whose memories will remain with her forever. She was placed in Miss Shannon Gilroy's class. The welcome she received in that class was unbelievable. She still talks about it even her senior year. Miss Gilroy was so welcoming. The half of the year she spent with Miss Gilroy is so memorable that words cannot express how we felt with her being in Miss Gilroy's class. Every time she goes back to Glenada Wood and Janice is missing, we know where to find her. She's in Miss Gilroy's class because she's still there. She was one who restored Janice's confidence. Mrs. Cecilia Bolden. Mrs. Bolden is an angel in disguise. She came and Janice was able to do what she wanted to do in fifth grade because she was supportive, she was encouraging. Most of the scholarships Janice, Janice got, Mrs. Bolden is the one who told us about it, emailed, phone calls, postal mail would let us know what is going on. She looked out for Janice even after she left that school. Because she supported Janice, Janice even wrote to her after she left the school to start the tutoring program back at the school and she accepted her proposal. She found her a sponsor and she allowed Janice to come back to Glen Arden Woods and tutor students, something that she loved to do. Dr. Peggy David, who met Janice when she was a toddler and became her mentor and is very supportive of Janice, who were always there, very supportive, and were the ones who have written most of the recommendation Janice needed. Uh, you've uh, triumphed over all the negatives. Uh, you've uh, done extremely well. Uh, we are really proud of that. Uh, if you continue to do those things that you've learned, continue to uh, look beyond the negatives, uh, you will continue to be triumphant, you will continue to be uh, successful, and success is the best answer for those who wish you ill. Here is some wisdom for your journey as you follow life's path. No matter where life, take, life takes you or what path you choose, you will always meet challenges. This is the way life is. There are no guarantees and no matter how many things you do right or how many rules you follow, there will always be that fork in the road that makes you choose between this way or that. Whenever you meet this place, remember these things. You are loved, love will sustain you. You are strong, prayer will get you through anything. You are wise, the greatest gift of all lies within you.
It's time to go to sleep. 